Welcome to How to Solo Flawless, the new Vesper's Host Dungeon, in the safest and least infuriating way possible using builds and loadouts that you have access to. Today we're going to be showing you how to do it on Titan, and if you are looking to do this on Warlock or Hunter instead, step one is to make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can catch that guide video when I put it out, but I do also recommend watching this one as a lot of the tips will be very general and it'll be a lot of information that you can take with you and use towards your runs with other classes. I also Generally speaking, I feel like Titan is one of the easiest options uh, for this. So even if you do generally lean towards other classes for solo flawlessing, I would say consider giving Titan a go. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to show you my build that I use for each encounter. And then I'm going to go through an example phase, maybe even two phases, depending on the encounter, and tell you every single possible thing that you might need to know to make this as easy as humanly possible. So, step one, let's load into the dungeon and get going. Thanks for clicking on this video, by the way. I'm glad you're here. It's great to see you. I hope you're having a good day. Um, buckle in for this one. It's probably the hardest solo flawless dungeon we've ever had. And it's going to take a lot of endurance and discipline and resilience. But I believe in you. And I don't think you'd be watching this video if you didn't believe in yourself either. So you've got it. We have got it. Let's get started. The first encounter, um, the intro section, your loadout doesn't matter too terribly much. So I would say just throw on whatever you like. Um, I like running an eager edge sword just to get through the traversal areas a little bit more quickly. Um, it's, you know, completely up to you what you run. I also like running Wither Horde a lot in this section because it's a lot of sword marauders. So, um, when all the sword marauders spawn, I can just go ahead and plop a Wither Horde down on the ground. And a lot of the sword marauders just kind of like run into the Wither Horde puddle. Makes it so I don't have to focus as much on uh, killing them. Makes things rather simple. You got to kill a decent amount of enemies. And then in the bottom left, you see a viral carrier approaches twice. That's the scanner and operator augment spawnings. So we're going to kill the scanner one first. Pick this up. And we're just going to run around until we figure out which one is the bad keypad. So that one lit up white. So that one's good. Um, we're going to come over here to this far one. That one is also good. We got two kind of in the middle here. We got the roof. That is good. And then this bad boy is the bad one. So... We know that that's the one we are not going to shoot. Big tip I have for you here that is going to carry on into the next encounter is there are always going to be more correct keypads that you have to hit than there are going to be incorrect keypads that you do not want to hit, aka okay, shooting them will make you die. Um, I always recommend that when you're doing like verbal callouts to yourself, which I think is very, very good. Um, you'll kind of hear as hear me doing that when I get to the first encounter. Um, call out the keypads that are wrong, right? So instead of trying to remember the four keypads that are correct, remember the two keypads that are incorrect. It's just less information that you have to keep inside your brain. Um, that's, that's what I do, at least. If you have a different process that works for you, um, feel free. But we'll, we'll get more into that as we get into this first encounter. Do you want to note, as we're rolling up into the first encounter, the ball duplication glitch for the first encounter uh, has been patched. So you will not see me showing that off. I try to avoid showing cheeses in these guides because they do tend to get patched. Um, so I wasn't going to show that anyway, but... If you've seen it elsewhere, it is now patched. So, for this first encounter, I think Thunder Crash is absolutely spectacular. So we're going to be going Thunder Crash on Prismatic. I've got Thruster. I've got Frenzied Blade with the classic Knockout and Consecration combo. So we have three Consecration options. It's going to heal us and do bonus melee damage. That's really, really nice for the very large tanky enemies that we have to kill in each wing. I just go ahead and go with Shackle Grenade. Uh, if you have a preference for a different grenade, you can. Um, and then we are, of course, running Purpose, Courage, Ruin, Dawn, and Protection. 
As far as the weapon setup, I really like Wither Horde for this a lot. We'll talk a little bit about why once we get into it. Primary weapon of choice. And I like to go with a grenade launcher. You could go with a rocket launcher instead if you'd like. Um, this is primarily for bursting down the final brig of the encounter, the very, very, very tanky one. So I like the grenade launcher, especially with Envious Assassin as well. So I get a ton of bullets in the magazine. You'll see um, how that ends up being really, really nice later. As far as mod selection, this is what I'm going with. Got a double solar siphon. Uh, this is, of course, just for my primary weapon. Um, mods here are not particularly important, so you can kind of run whatever you want for a certain degree. I have an arc resistance for the sniper enemies. Uh, I've got a solar resistance because there's a lot of drags that have the shredders and things of that nature. Concussive dampener is always a good go-to. Not a huge deal what you run here, though. As long as you got the thunder crash, these weapons, you'll be chilling. So we're going to plant this flag down and start things up. I like to slide over here, reboot the system, immediately get out of the pit because the brig is going to come on down. And then I just instantly thunder crash this guy. Thunder Crash one-shots every single Brig in this encounter, aside from the final one. So it's very, very solid. I try to maintain my melee charges as well, but if I do get weak on HP, I'll just go ahead and melee something to proc knockout real fast. Um, just gives you a massive heal, keeps you very safe. These uh, dregs with the Shredder Cannons can be a little dangerous, so be wary of them. Gonna go ahead and kill the scanner guy, grab his scanner, and we're gonna make our way over to wing one. Pick off these three dregs right here. I like to try and get a wither horde up there because all the other dregs like to jump right on into it. Tag him, tag him, tag him, tag him. And uh, keep in mind here, you need to kill every single enemy right here in this area to get the door to open to the next area. There's that consecration knockout doing absolute work and absolutely frying the two large enemies. Then we come along in here, keeping an eye on our viral scanner timer. Very important we keep an eye on that. If you're low on your timer at this point, if you take a little bit more time to kill those guys than I did, you can dunk it right here and then immediately pull it back out to get a timer reset. Now you have a fresh minute. Alternatively, if you're a little faster, you can just keep it, come on over here, double consecrate those guys, instantly dead. Um, and then you can get your refresh right over here if you need to. So for this part, like I said, um, you can number these in whatever way you want. Um, I number them one through six, where one is the first one that I come into contact with and six is the final one that I come into contact with. Like I said, I highly recommend remembering these based on which ones are bad, not based on which ones are good. So for example, one is a bad one. So I'm just remembering one, two is good, three is good, four is good and five is bad so in my head all i'm thinking is one five and i'll like honestly when i run this uh i verbally say this to myself and i recommend you do the same as well as you're on your way to getting operator literally say verbally to yourself one five one five one five one five pick up operator one that's a bad one one five one five one five just makes it really nice and easy you know what i mean so much easier to remember um Nothing wrong with talking to yourself while you're doing a solo flawless either. You're going to feel a little bit crazy at first, um, but it works. Trust me. So next up, uh, we can kind of ignore these shanks for the most part, to be honest. We're going to pick up the ball. We still have operator. We're going to bring the ball over to this terminal and dunk our operator in that terminal. Um, you want to be holding the ball as much as humanly possible. In these first two wings, it's not as important as it is in the later wings. Um, but you have a minute worth of time with the ball. Um, this is where the Wither Horde comes in massive, because what you can do is you can just kind of hold the ball um, and you're not losing time on the one minute ball timer. You can just kind of hold the ball, chuck a Wither Horde at the enemy, let the Wither Horde do its thing, and then just kind of hold on to the ball while the Wither Horde is ticking it as the Wither Horde gets, you know, down on energy. Go ahead and pick up the, um, drop the ball again, shoot another Wither Horde shot. And it makes it so that your ball timer doesn't really go down at all. So it's 38 seconds when I picked it up right there. Um... Now it's probably down to about 36. Um, so here, here's here's a real-time example. Shoot the Wither Horde at that guy. 33 seconds, 32. Wither Horde's ticking that tanky enemy right there as I drop the ball. Still at 32 seconds. You're not really losing any time. Obviously, make sure you're keeping an eye on the radiation stacks at the top of your screen. Don't go to X10. Don't hold it for that long. Um, but... I think uh, a big mistake a lot of people are going to make in this section is feeling like they have to rush through. Um, 
and keep the ball on the ground and try and burn down all the enemies as quickly as humanly possible. When in reality, you really don't have to do that. Um, you can just kind of let the Wither Horde do the work and kind of hide behind the corner while holding the ball. The time's not going down whatsoever and you're honestly in a really good spot. Um, so I would say um, a, a, a massive thing in this uh, solo flawless dungeon is uh, this thing, it's gonna test your patience and it's going to test your ability to be patient, if that makes sense. Um, because there's a lot of situations where um, you're going to feel the need to rush things, as people do when they play Destiny. Pop Prismatic right here so we can get our Triple Consecration back. Absolutely level those two guys. Um, there's going to be a lot of situations in this dungeon where you feel like you have to be moving quickly, because that's just kind of like that's kind of how things always feel in the solo dungeon. You feel like you got to be on the move, got to be quick. When in actuality, there's a lot of situations where you can kind of just hang out and take your time. You're not really in a rush in most areas of this dungeon, so we're just gonna we're just gonna be a little leisurely. We're gonna take things at our pace. We're gonna grab our scanner right here. Again, we're gonna remember use whatever naming scheme you want here. So I'm just remembering the ones that uh, are bad. There's six total, four are good, two are bad. So we're gonna keep on running. And so actually in this situation, the first four that I scanned are the good ones, as you can see by the white dots on my radar. So I automatically know that the other two are bad. So I don't really even need to scan them. You should probably scan them just to do your due diligence, but I know that five and six are the bad ones here. So dunk that bad boy in. Hit that. Boom, 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 boom. Kill a couple of these shanks. And same thing as last time. Whenever we're holding the nuke, the timer on the nuke is not going down. So we're just going to keep this nuke picked up. We're going to make sure we put our operator back in the terminal as well. We're just going to kind of hold our nuke. And we're going to let the Wither Horde do its thing. Wither Horde sticking that guy right there. Not in any rush at all. This is why Wither Horde is absolutely peak here. Again, like I said, not nearly as important for those first two waves. Um, I'm just kind of using them as a way to demonstrate. Um, it's gonna, that, taking advantage of, I don't, I don't wanna say trick, but um, being disciplined with holding the nuke, um, it's gonna come in massive when we get to this third upcoming wave, as you'll see. So I'm just kind of trying to, trying to lay that foundation right there. So second nuke dunked on our way to wave number three. Again, we're taking our time. This isn't this isn't contest mode. There's no timer. We're just taking our time here. We're doing our thing. Make sure you uh, keep an eye on your back, though. As you can see, these guys are shooting me through the store. So um, don't think that you're super super safe in this position. Now you have to walk up a little bit after that initial wave of dregs. But we're just kind of doing our thing, killing every single enemy. Not in any rush. This ain't contest mode. Slinging a Wither Horde. A couple grenade launcher shots, maybe, for good measure. Just miss a bunch. It's, you know, that's how we do things, right? <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a rough Wither Horde shot to showcase in a guide. But that's okay. You know, we show that kind of stuff. That's all good. So we're going to keep on going. We have two more guys that have spawned in. The big dudes, we're going to let them run to us. Get those consecrations down. Got one of them. Looks like I got both of them, so we're in good shape. And then once again, we're going to grab our scanner. I like to label these R123 and L123, personally, again. Whatever naming system you like. So R2, I'm remembering R2 and R3. Easy as that. R2, R3. That's all I'm saying to myself. Talking to myself while I'm solo flossing. R2, R3. R2, R3. R2, R3. R2, R3. Kill a couple of the shanks before we get to business. Boom. Boop. The second I hit the final one, I'm popping my operator back in. Killing a couple of these shanks. And this is where we're really going to want to make sure we're hanging on to the ball quite a bit. So we, we're gonna run over kind of over here. This is kind of our cover area, clean up the couple couple of shanks that were left behind. And this is where this Wither Horde is really gonna do a bulk of the work, right? The radiation timer, it, it stacks so slowly. 
So you really do want to take your time here. Let the Wither Horde do the work. If you want to fire a couple grenade launcher shots, feel free. But you want as much time as humanly possible on this ball for this final one, because not only is it the furthest path, um, but you also have to kill a very tanky brig. That's not as simple as just pop and T-crash and one shot in it. So we really are being diligent and disciplined with our Wither Horde, letting our Wither Horde do the work. When it comes to the shanks, we'll go ahead and just shoot the shanks, right? We're going to take our sweet time here with our jumps. We are not in any rush. The radiation it sacks so slowly. We are taking our time. I like to stick the ball right here in this cube so it doesn't fall off the map. Kill that shank. Pick the ball back up. Taking our time. Final shank right here. Going to drop the ball real quick. Couple hand cannon shots. Pick up the ball. And this is where we're going to want to get a little crazy. So I'm going to talk about what we're going to do before we do it because it's going to happen a little fast, okay? The big brig, we want to thunder crash him when he's about at 50% HP, which means we need to use our grenade launcher to get him to that 50% HP. So we're going to pop transcendence, rip off a ton of grenade launcher shots, and then once we get him to about 50% HP, we're going to throw a couple in front of us as well. Going to have to jump forward as well, get, get out of the... Uh, range of his missiles. Careful about enemies jumping in front of you. Be very careful as well once you get him to 50% HP because his face mask is going to fly off. So we're just going to be very diligent here. Once he's about 50%, that's when we rip the Thunder Crash. It'll finish him off. Had like 8 seconds left on the bomb. Plenty of time. Get the final dunk in. Easy as that. Now, I want to reiterate something because it didn't happen in the footage right there, but if I had shot about one more grenade launcher shot, it probably would have happened. When you do get him below 50% HP and he shows his crit spot, his faceplate is going to fly off, and it is a technically like a piece of terrain. It has physics, right? Which means if it flies off at you and you shoot a grenade launcher shot into it, it'll blow up and it'll kill you. Similarly, you can thunder crash and hit it, right? So if you're going to damage him past 50% HP, um, so much so to the point where his face mask falls off, let the face mask come off, get around it, then you do your Thunder Crash, or you can Thunder Crash just a little bit before 50% like I did, so you don't even have to deal with that at all. We're going to go ahead and switch back over to the Eager Edge Sword. Um, you can if you want to here. You can um, go like a machine gun alternatively if you'd like. It's completely up to you. I just switched the Eager Edge primarily for traversal purposes. But a um, little low ammo on it. Hope I can get a brick maybe out of one of these guys. Wouldn't mind. Maybe, maybe. There we go. Thank you. Guide RNG, right? So, now we're at the... Um, I don't know, the, the the five ball dunk section. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, don't, don't treat this section lightly. It is very easy to mess this up, okay? So please pay careful attention. In my opinion, I've done a lot of testing in different routes. This is the safest way you can go about doing it. So do it this way. Step one, we're going to power this off to get the power reserves charged, but then we're actually going to come over here to open this door. We're then going to close that door to get the power charge back. We're going to open this to get a second sack of power charge, and we are going to run down this hallway all the way to the end where this captain is going to be waiting for us. These captains, these orange bar sword captains, are always the one that have the nuclear cores. So we're going to get the nuclear core, mop up a couple of these dregs so that they're not messing with us. And we are going to sprint all the way past. If the servitor tries to integrate us, we're going to hide in a little cubby right there, open the door, and then reclose it so we get the power charge back and so a bunch of enemies don't fly in here. And right here, we got dunk number one. Immediately after dunking ball number one, we're going to have a new captain spawn right in front of us, sticking with the Wither Horde, get him dead. And then we're actually going to exit through the other door. Not the door we came in through. We're going to go the other one. And we're going to make sure we close it on our way out. So we get the power charge back, and we're going to make our way over here, head through this door. So we're going to slide on in, 
re-close it to get the power charge back. We're going to open this bad boy up. Make sure throughout this entire process as well, you're keeping an eye on your radiation stack timer. Don't let that get to 10, of course. We're going to then come on over here, turn the power off on this one. Once again, I, I came in through the store like this. So you'll take a left, turn the power off. That'll give you a third stack of power reserves. Then we can dunk our core in here. Number two, we'll then have a new captain jump up. We'll kill him for his core. Open this door. And then we'll grab our core. Then we'll close this door on our way out. We're going to completely ignore all these enemies. Be lightning quick. And get this dunk off. Boss is going to be there, so be a little careful. And then we're going to slide on through here, through this door. Hang out with this captain to get core number four. Before we pick up the core, I'm going to come over here, kill all of these dregs. And then we'll get this core. Turn off this machine. That'll give us power reserves number four. More stacks than you end up needing. A lot of times the boss will try to do the integration right here. This little cubby will keep you safe while you open the door. He didn't do it that time because uh, we were a little quick. But if he does do it, you can get in that cubby and you'll be perfectly safe. Dunk in that core. Here's next captain for power core number five. Grab the core. Open door. It's at this stage you don't really need to be as worried about closing the doors anymore. I mean, you can if you want to, but... Uh, for the most part, I think I think all but uh, you have enough power reserves to make it through the rest. I mean, close one, maybe. But I think if you have three stacks of power reserves at this point, you have enough to make it through the rest uh, without having to worry about it. Maybe you need four at this point. Hon honestly, best to be diligent and just keep closing the doors and whatnot. Now, once you get through that set of double doors, you're going to kill all three of these dregs. You're then going to meet the boss. We are going to have to run past it. It's a little spooky. Just make sure that you have full HP. And we're just going to sprint. Hit a little slide. He'll do his integration. He'll do his melee attack. You'll take a little bit of damage. Nothing crazy. Can make it through easily. Three drags to deal with in here. If you're weak from the servitor as you walk in there, remember that you have knockout on. You can just do one of your melees on one of the drags. It'll give you a heal. Dunk core number five in there. Down the hatch. And that's that. Not a crazy hard part, um, but like it's it's definitely an area where you can wipe if you don't treat it with respect. So um, don't zone out too much there. Plenty of things that can kill you in that area. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, as with all solo flawless dungeons, right? There's plenty of things in all areas that can kill you. This area as well. Um, I have not personally lost Wipe Day Solo Flawless Run to this area, but, like, you know, let's not pretend, like, we can't, uh, we can't, like, get a little, get a little cocky with our jumps and we make a little mistake, right? So, just be smart here. <laughs> yeah. Solo flawless. Am I right, baby? How about that? Second encounter, first boss. Got a couple different options for you. Loadout wise, if you are not an exotic class item enjoyer, do not fret. Syntheseps will have you covered perfectly here. The strategy here, on Titan at least, is Glacial Quake is fantastic for AoE damage, which is perfect for this boss. This is going to be our primary source of DPS. If we're using the Syntheseps Exotics, this is also... I could infuse them a little bit, I suppose. That's just perfect. Um, chill with me here while we do this. If we're using the Syntheseps Exotics, um, that is going to increase the damage of our uh, super, right? I do want to note, if you have uh, exotic class items... And you have Spirit of the Syntheseps. Spirit of the Syntheseps only increases melee damage. That's how it differs from regular Syntheseps, okay? So don't think you can come in here with Spirit of the Syntheseps on an exotic class item and you're going to get the same thing. This is strictly melee damage, whereas the actual Syntheseps exotic is melee and super damage. As far as the rest of our kit, um, honestly, same exact thing that we were running for the first encounter. Consecration Knockout, 
Um, purpose, courage, ruin, ruin very important here, increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal, absolutely massive here. Um, also massive, our artifact, Hail the Storm, shattering stasis crystals releases shards of ice that damage and slow targets. If you want, if you are into the whole tonics thing, you can get the boost where shattering frozen targets and stasis crystals deals increased damage. I'm not going to make this guide surrounding tonics because, one, I don't really care about tonics. They're kind of confusing to me, and I don't really feel like bothering with them. And I'm sure that there's a ton of other people that are in that boat. Also, if you're watching this guide after tonics have been vaulted or sunset or put in the DCB or something like that, I don't want this to become irrelevant to you. So whilst you don't need this artifact perk, whilst you don't need tonics, it's nice. So use them if you have them, use them if they're up your alley. If you're not, if you don't care that much, what I'm going to be showing is without tonics, so it's not that big of a deal. If you don't really feel like going with Syntheseps, you can totally go with an exotic class item with Spirit of the Star Eater or, uh, alternatively. In my testing, the damage between doing Spirit of the Star Eater and doing Syntheseps for the DPS phases is pretty comparable. So I would say if you have an exotic class item with Spirit of the Star Eater, go ahead and use it because then you get a bonus Spirit perk as well. If you don't, Syntheseps will be perfectly fine. I'm going to be showcasing this on Syntheseps um, so that you guys know that you'll be perfectly fine. As far as the heavy slot, two options here, pretty similar. You can go Tractor Cannon or you can go Parasite. I feel like Parasite is a little bit more overall damage. My one issue with Parasite is that it does a lot of self damage in a very wide radius. I personally don't feel like taking that risk when I'm doing solo flawless. So I like to stick with Tractor Cannon instead to debuff the boss before I start doing the Glacial Quake. If you would prefer with a Parasite, Worms Hunger X20 shot before you doing D before you start doing DPS as opposed to the Tractor Cannon, and just go ahead and accept the, um, what is it? Uh, Concussive Reload Artifact perk using a Grenade Launcher to damage a boss, uh, damage a champion, or break a combat shield weakens them. If you'd prefer to just get the 15% out of that with a special GL and go with Parasite instead of the 30% debuff from Tractor, be my guest. I'd prefer the Tractor personally. Does it result in maybe having to do one extra phase? Maybe, but Solo Flawless is a marathon, not a sprint. If you can do three phases, then you can also do four. It'll be fine. As far as other weaponry, this Lost Signal Seasonal Grenade Launcher is incredible because it is a darkness element. It's stasis, which means it fills up my darkness transcends meter like that. I have the craftable one from last season, auto-loading Vorpal. If you do not have this, you can feel free to go with a Disorienting Grenades Grenade Launcher instead. I love this, though, because it fills up my Darkness Transcendence Meter. It's not a requirement, but it feels really, really good if you are able to get your hands on one. Primary Weapon Slot, I've been loving Solar Hand Cannon. You can run whatever works best for you. As far as mods go, same resistances. Um... I think I had these surges on when I was doing Parasite for DPS, so I should probably switch them, it would seem. I guess I'll go like Absolution, Double Recuperation, I guess. I don't know. I don't think it matters that much, to be honest. We're doing all the damage with our Glacial Quake, right? I've got Siphon mods for my primary ammo weapon, plus my special grenade launcher, loader for my primary ammo weapon, bolstering detonation, impact induction, powerful attraction, Reaper, Bomber. Not a lot of these don't matter that much. Um, and you'll see why as we start going. Um, I think that's everything when it comes to the build. Let me show you guys how to play this fight. So, and again, the special GL is insane. Take a peek at my darkness transcendence meter. Just uh, check out how quickly it fills up. Okay, that was a bad shot. But uh, you'll see once we get a cluster of enemies. Step one, kill that uh, shank, grab the operator, and dunk it in the machine immediately. Similar to previous encounter, remember, we've got knockout going on right now. So anytime that you're a little bit weak on HP, just go ahead and melee an enemy real quick, kill it with knockout, gives you a big old HP heal, you'll be good to go. 
I like hanging out in here and using my consecrations and using my hand cannon to just try and fill up my transcendence meters. If you want to play a little bit safer, feel free. But as long as you have melees up with knockout, it's pretty much impossible to die. Once you get your transcendence available, you can pop it and just nuke everything until the boss summons a machine priest. Two consecrations puts it to bed. Easy as that. We then get teleported. I like throwing my transcendence grenade right there because it hopefully suspends all of the exploder shanks. It's not guaranteed to every time because they're spread out a little bit differently. So just be aware. Number one thing to pay attention to when you're fighting this boss is keep an eye on your radar. Don't tunnel vision, don't ADS, don't tunnel vision too hard because if you're looking at your radar and you see that blinking solid red light, not the tiny one that's far away, but the entire pizza slice is filled up, that means that something's pretty close to you and the only stuff that gets close to you here is those exploder shanks. They hurt and their explosion radius is about twice as big as you think it is. So treat them with respect. Don't go crazy. Play smart, play safe. Next, I like to wait for that shank to come out a little bit. Notice how the shank will spawn way back there. Notice how I kind of uh, let it walk out a little bit. Just makes it a lot safer to grab suppressor. I really love deploying suppressor from behind this piece of cover right here as well. So I kind of get right there. Just will take a little bit of damage. Honestly, my recommendation is don't go for the suppressor the suppressor deploy unless you're full HP. Then we're going to split up the servitor. I see number one. And I missed the other one. One eight. One eight. So we're going to run over here. I recommend against going in the middle because if you try to run through the middle, all the servitors spawn on you and you get stuck inside of them. Be diligent, go away far, far around to the far left. If you're on PC, please type the two servitor numbers in the chat, in your fire team chat, so you can see them. If you're not on PC and you don't have that luxury, have like your phone next to you, have like a piece of paper where you can write it down. Having to remember both of those numbers through an, through an entire phase while you also have the stress of going solo flawless, don't try and keep it up here. Please, piece of paper, phone, something something to keep track of it that is not strictly your brain. It'll make your life a lot easier. Trust me. Or don't trust me. Maybe maybe your memory is a steel trap. In which case, you know, more power to you, right? So we're just trying to get this transcendence uh, meter filled back up. Trying to get all my trying to get my darkness meter full again. And boom. So we're going to pop our transcendence and we're just going to use it to absolutely nuke everything until we get that machine freeze to spawn. Lasts for a pretty long time, especially if you're killing enemies. There's the machine freeze. Another consecration. Consecration number two. They are dead. And then transcendence is, of course, still up. We're going to get that nice grenade position. Boom. And then I like to try and focus on these enemies on the left. I try not to ADS. Try to kind of hover. Trying to make sure I account for all angles, staring at my radar, making sure none of those pizza slices get too big. And if you do end up in a situation, by the way, where you're a little back here and you see some servers coming through, you have to reload, you're not able to get them. It's not an issue. My favorite way to kind of bounce, if that makes sense, um, if, if there is a server getting too close to me, is I love to just like get high up in the air, run over here, play here. If, if I then have an angle on the servitor, then I take it out. If it's getting too close to me or I don't have an angle, then I like to hop way back over here and reset my positioning. The integration's never a problem because it takes five seconds for it to kill you. Um, so even if you are jumping over in the air, right? As long as you get to some point where there's cover between you and the boss, then you're good. Um, additionally, if the... Uh, if the explosive servers do get close, too close to you, just pop your super. I know it feels really bad to pop your super, even though you need it for DPS phase, but DPS phase in this encounter starts when you want it to start. So just pop your super. It's all good. It is better to pop your super and have to waste an extra two minutes 
regaining it before you enter the DPS phase than it is to not pop your super and die as a result and have to spend another 30 minutes getting back to this point. So, once again, letting this guy come out, never going for the buff when the servitor is red and flying out all of his explosive servitor buddies. Oh boy. You can shoot them, by the way, to make them explode and you won't take damage. I'm a little weak right now. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna let myself heal up a little bit. We're gonna get the clone down. Nice and easy. Nice and safe. We got six. And we got nine. Nice. So we've got one eight, six nine. Simple enough. We're gonna fly on over here. We're gonna grab this operator buff. And I know we got eight right there. I know we got nine right there, six right there, and then we'll reconvene over here and hit one. That'll despawn everything, dunk the buff immediately. We're gonna go ahead and use a melee on this guy, pick up the augment immediately. That was a little suspicious. Send it out, blow it up. Double tractor, pop super, spam right click. I've noticed a lot of times the DPS here feels really RNG. It just kind of depends on like how the servitors decide to spread out. That's maybe four phase territory, maybe three phase territory. As I said before, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Take your time here. If your DPS is crap, it's okay. It's not the end of the world to do an extra phase. I've I've tried, by the way, from like a... And listen, full disclosure, I could just be bad with Stasis Titan Super. I don't know. It's entirely possible that I'm just bad with Stasis Titan Super. But I've tried doing the Stasis Titan Super for that DPS phase. I've tried being close to the servitors. I've tried being far away from the servitors. I've tried being every single distance in between. Sometimes the DPS is terrible, sometimes the DPS is great. So if anyone who has consistently done solo flawless on a Titan knows the absolute, or not even solo flawless, but just on this fight on a Titan, knows the absolute perfect range to be, you know the coordinates? Please comment it down below, because I'd love to know. I have, a, I have no issue admitting when there is a gap in my knowledge that could very well be one of the gaps. So please, uh, if, if you have the answer, let me let me know. That'd be awesome. Okay, we're in a little bit of a spicy position here. Gonna have to fight our way out of it. Keep an eye on the boss, making sure none of these bombs roll into my position while I'm a little weak. Probably gonna show you guys one more phase. I don't need to show you guys the entire kill, I don't think, but I do want to show you one more phase. Because there is uh, one more thing I want to talk about as we're uh as we continue on this fight so we're gonna let all those bombs pass by we're gonna kill this fella get that suppressor augment slide away shoot that get ready to type our two servitors we have got seven four once again always come through this side you don't want to get trapped in the middle when all the servitors teleport they put you in like a they put you in like a servitor cage weird. I don't like it. To go through the side, trust me. It can be kind of weird to get out of. And that would be... I haven't I, I haven't lost a solo flawless to that yet, but I know I'd not be happy if I did lose a solo flawless to that. So we're going to keep it up. Getting our darkness transcendence meter up. Got our transcendence. We're good to go. Kill everything. Kill everything. Get that machine priest up. Uh, boom, second consecration, boom, dead. Trans it just lasts so long. Love throwing that grenade right there in that area because it seems to get all of the exploder shanks that come from that angle. Oh, there's the, we might be getting overwhelmed a little bit. Never mind. looks like we ended up being okay. But I was fully ready mentally to break over here and hop over or to pop my super. Keep that stuff in mind. It's completely okay. It's better better to do what you got to do to not die 
than to spend 30 minutes getting back to this point like we discussed. So we're gonna kill that shank right there, let the bombs go by, pick up this augment, try and get that bad boy out. Perfection. And then we're gonna take a peek. We got two and five. Once again, top of your screen, you've got an augment right now. If you're spending the full 60 seconds up there and dying as a result, you're doing something bravely wrong. But just make sure make sure you're conscious of that timer, just in case. Maybe you want to double check, triple check, quadruple check that you actually are have the correct servitor numbers, but just remember you have a timer on that. We got two, four, five, seven here. So we're gonna I'm gonna thin the pack a little bit. Grab this bad boy. Two, four, five, seven. I know four is right there. I always kind of like to start, as you can see the angle I've been taking, I always like to kind of grab operator and then sweep around the front side and then make a loop around here. You can do whatever works for you. That's what works for me. Because ideally, you want the final node that you hit to be one that's... Uh, you you want it to be either seven or three or one or four something that has you sitting in front of this bank console so that right when you hit node number four you can instantly dunk it in and spawn camp the suppressor shank that's going to spawn um so that's what i do so we got four two five and then we got seven so seven's right here so we'll kind of hit that and then immediately after i hit it boom i'm already in position spawn camp this guy Throw that down, thrust her back. Jump the, uh... Oh! He, uh, he decided to do a couple extra ticks of damage, it would seem. I don't know why. Be aware of that, I guess. I've never seen that before. Um, make sure he's, uh, actually very, very gone before you, you might get robbed out of a little DPS there. I don't know why he stuck around for a little bit longer, to be completely honest. I guess that just happens sometimes. Looking like a four-phase situation. Again, like I said, DPS feels a little bit RNG. You can probably get a two-phase out of, uh, sorry, a three-phase out of there if your RNG is a little bit better. Three-phase, four-phase. I know I keep saying it, but it's true. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So if you gotta go a fourth phase, it's all good. If you can do three phases, you can do four phases. So that's this encounter. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this boss. You guys don't need to see an R2 phases, and then oh, I'll pick back up with you for the traversal area. <laughs> yeah. That's a good DPS phase. What I did differently there compared to the other phases, I don't really know. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not, I guess. Another thing I do want to know when you get to the end of the DPS phase, once you get his health right there, you have infinite time to finish as... I mean, I don't want to say infinite for sure, but... What feels like infinite time. So don't, don't feel like you have to rush and put yourself in a dangerous position. Once the servitors start dying... It's my understanding that, like, once the first one goes, you it, it, the phase is just kind of endless until you eventually kill all of them. It might not be endless. I mean, don't be that leisurely with it, but, like, I've had times where it takes me, like, 30 seconds because I'm just kind of, like, noodling around to kill the other servitors. So it feels endless. So don't don't feel like you have to freak out. Don't put yourself in a dangerous position to finish off the other servitors because, uh, you, you, you know, you feel like you're going to have to do another phase. Your DPS phase is going to run out. I don't think it does. After we finish that encounter, I love going to Strand. Mainly just for the grapple grenade for this traversal area. If you accidentally miss a jump, look straight up, grapple grenade. Potentially save yourself. Right. Um, I also, it's just now occurring to me, I gotta fix up my mods a little bit to make sure I have tier 10 resilience. Um, I then also love to switch my tractor cannon to an eager edge sword, just because it's a traversal area, and then I love to throw on a special ammo sniper, at least for the beginning. Now, it's my understanding that this traversal area, it's lightning. If you're standing inside of it when it strikes, does one shot you. Haven't tested it personally, but I'm told it works identically to the boss room's lightning. I don't feel like testing it, so let's just assume it one shots you. So I'm going to show you what I consider to be the safest path 
through this with all the trip mines and the lightning and the enemies and things of that nature, right? So we're going to fall right on down through. I like to hang out way back here and kill these three Vandal Snipers. This is why I put on my special ammo sniper real quick. You can shoot through this floor, by the way, fun fact. But if you're all the way back here, none of these enemies can hit you. And then we'll just go ahead and body shot the brig. I don't care. I am not messing with him. Take off his face mask. Boom, boom, dead. And then we can continue on our way. I go into here. Jump all the way over here. Hop up. Hop up here. Go all the way up. Take a right. Continue on. Don't disrespect this part. This is where the lightning is going to start striking. So basically, my philosophy is if I see a lightning strike about to happen in front of me, I just let it hit. And I wait until the field goes away unless there's a lightning strike for me. And so like right there, I'm not messing with any of that. I had a lightning strike where I was trying to go. I had a lightning strike where I came from. Not messing with that. That's what the grapple grenades were right there. It's I don't believe lightning can strike in this area. Right here, like this platform and this platform. So if you want to hang out here while uh, for your grapple to gra uh, grenade to come back, you can. Um, you can even hang out over here. Lightning strikes this area, right? But I don't think it hits this, 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 any of that. So if you want to hang out here for your grapple grenade, grenade to come back, feel free. I think on this area, it's not as bad. So I'm going to keep going just for the sake of, like, time on the video. And don't underestimate that lightning tick damage either. It hurts you pretty quick. So we're just going to keep on going. Keep on going. Cut that guy up. And then here I like to be diligent. I like to kill all of these enemies. Do you have to? Probably not, but... Just to keep things safe. Got some snipers as well. The reason I like to kill these enemies too is because I like to take my time before I go into the next room. A lot harder to take your time when you got a lot of stuff shooting at you. At this stage, I like to swap to Wither Horde as well. You'll see why in a moment. But once you go to this door, you'll notice... Oh, a bunch of tripwires. Yikes. I like to kill this one. These three, I don't really know how you're supposed to kill them. So, this is where I like to have the Eager Edge Sword. Bunny hop, swing, get right through them. You could probably slide through them. Haven't experimented with that. Maybe I should experiment with that. Just to be safe. Yeah, you're good. You're good to slide through them. I have no issue sacrificing my solo flawless run to find out some info for you guys. Um, keep on going. Be diligent here. Kill all of these. No reason not to, right? Boom, boom, boom. And then once you get to this area, you have the big tanky captain. He's going to spawn two servitors with him. I like to wither horde the servitors first. Once he starts doing his stasis thing, I like to get out of the way because I'm not messing with that. We can get an angle on the trash mobs maybe if we want to. Keep flinging the wither hordes. Really want both of those servitors dead because they're going to make that uh, large captain immune. So that's why my number one priority is these servitors. Stick it with the wither horde. That'll do most of the work. And it uh, looks like it's dead. So once that servitor's dead, I like to run in, kill something with a melee ability to get my banner of war started. And then once my banner of war is started, pop my super heavy attack so I get the attack speed boost. And then just go to town with light attacks. Banner of war plus synthesis. Absolutely one shot that guy. Use what's left over to shred the rest of the enemies. Got a tangle. These guys do have the solar shredder cannons. They hurt very much, so don't. Don't disrespect them. Don't kind of hang around in here thinking you're super safe, but for the most part, pretty good. Lightning strikes pretty much everywhere here. So you got to be pretty good about 
being disciplined with your timing. So I like to wait if I can help it. Don't see anything here, so I'm good to go. Don't see anything here, so I'm good to go. I'm going to wait for that to go away unless I have a lightning strike coming in on my position. Oh boy. I'd rather take the tick damage one than the one that's about to freshly come in because the one that's about to freshly come in is going to one shot me if I'm if I'm too uh, low to the ground. Going to wait for that to go away. Just playing nice and slow, nice and smooth. Don't disrespect this part. That lightning is dangerous. That lightning will mess you up. I'll just respect it. I don't even want to... I don't even want to think about losing a solo flawless run in that traversal area. Be disciplined. Deep breaths. All that good stuff. Final boss time. First thing before you do anything else, before you start the final boss, do not shoot at him! There's a little interactable over here that you might have. I don't know what causes this to be here. But you can inch up without him noticing, with him being none the wiser. You want to collect this because during the DPS phase, if you have the glowing clone spawning anywhere around here, you kill him and he drops the radiation orb. It'll make you try to collect that thing before you pick up the radiation orb. Mid DPS phase, not a great idea. So make sure you grab that before you tag him to get his attention and start the overall fight. Very, very tiny thing. But if that saves at least one person's run, works for me. Let's talk about loadout for the final boss. First things first, I'm going to wait for the lightning to pass. Do its thing. Passes in, chilling, loadout time. I cannot emphasize this enough. Marathon, not a sprint. Our loadout is uh, about survivability. It's about staying alive. And that's all it's about. I don't care. If with this loadout, if you're 100% optimal, you can get a four phase kill. For most players, average players, even for me, it's probably going to be five or six phases. And if it happens to be seven, if it happens to be eight, if it happens to be 10, it's fine. It doesn't matter how many phases you take. A solo flawless is a solo flawless. An emblem is an emblem. There is no ego here. There is no pride. We're not trying to set speed running records. Take it slow. Take a deep breath. Be calm, be cool, collected. We're going for the long haul here, and that's okay. Weapons. As I alluded to previously, this lost signal is an absolute dime with the concussive reload artifact perk for increasing your damage. If you don't have it, it's okay. It just means overall your DPS is going to be a little bit lower. It's going to take you a couple extra phases. That's fine. It's not the end of the world. Alternatively, you can go and auto-loading disorienting grenade launcher if you'd like. But this one is my favorite for this boss fight, if you can get your hands on it. It was from Echoes, so you can go to Failsafe, the vendor, and hopefully pick up one. Maybe even pick up five so that you're able to craft it. Auto-loading on it, absolute perfection. Primary ammo weapon of choice, probably the same weapon that you've been using throughout this entire dungeon. Whatever works for you. Damage weapon, Grand Overture. I know that there's strategies where people are going Thunder Crash, they're going Prismatic, they're going Anarchy, and they're two-phasing the boss solo, three-phasing the boss solo. My problem with those strategies is they require high-level mechanical execution, they require an intimate knowledge of the arena, they require an intimate knowledge of positioning and maneuverability in the DPS phases, they require a lot of button inputs, they require a lot of correct decisions made in a very small amount of time. That's stressful. This loadout with Grand Overture requires you to sit in the exact same spot, Aim forward and hold down your trigger. In my opinion, for a solo flaws, that's the safer move. That's the simpler move. I'm always going to go with that personally. If you like the Thunder Crash option, then you can maybe uh, look into that. Uh, this is the one I'm recommending to people. Slow is, uh, what's that saying? Um, slow is smooth. Smooth is fast, I think is the one. As far as our subclass loadout, Lorely Splendor is what we're going with here. This is extremely important for not only, generally speaking, keeping us extra healthy for um, for the rooms 
right? My problem with loadouts involving heal clip and things of that nature is they require you to get kills to proc their healing benefits. And there's nothing that you're able to kill in the red room and the blue room while you're doing all the mechanics, right? You could kill the radiation clones, but then they're going to respawn with their radiation shields and that's no fun. Um, you can't kill the boss and you can only kill one of the four clones that he spawns to pick up the nuke. So you don't have a readily available plethora of enemies to kill the proc heal clip. Lorely, you can proc whenever you want or just automatically procs when you get low HP, which I really, really love. Subclass setup, Hammer of Soul. We're going with Rally Barricade because it has the lowest cooldown so we can get the most mileage out of Lorely with it. Throwing Hammer. We're going Healing Grenade for another emergency button healing source. We got Soul Invictus for another healing source, Restoration, whenever we get Ability Kills, Throwing Hammer. We got Roaring Flames so that our Throwing Hammer is going to do a little bit of bonus damage. We've got Empyrean so that our Solar Weapon or Ability Final Blows, this is why I love using a Solar Primary Ammo Weapon here. Um, is going to extend Restoration and Radiant Effects. This is really nice for the beginning of the each uh, phase. Torches, so we get Radiant when we hit something with our hammer. Ashes, so that our uh, we apply more Squirt Stacks to targets. Um, that's nice for our super DPS. And then we got Searing, Defeating Squirt Targets, grants melee energy, creates a Fire Sprite. This one's not as important if you want to swap this for something else. So if you want to go like Solus instead or something like that, uh, be... Wait a minute. Why am I not going Solus here? No, you shoot a thousand percent. Goes Why do I not have Solus on? <laughs> we all make mistakes, am I right? Solus in slot four. So your restoration effects are increased. More mileage out of Lori. God. <laughs> Bear with me here, folks. Mods. Uh, I've got the arc loader for Grand Overture. Loader for your primary ammo weapon of choice, heavy finder, special finder, siphon for your primary ammo weapon, concussive dampener, arc for the boss and his clones. I've got solar. Um, I believe solar is like the lightning tick damage. Could be wrong, but I believe it is. If I turn out to be wrong, go double arc instead. Concussive dampener, arc scavenger for the grand overture ammo, innervation, recuperation. Then we've got reaper, utility kickstart. Absolutely massive here and bomber. We'll talk about why utility kick start, uh, kick start is absolutely massive as we get into this fight. There's a lot of information for me to give you. A lot of tips, a lot of tricks for this fight. So uh, let's get to it. Let me show you everything. First phase I'm going to show you is going to be the general way that you want to play all of these phases. Second phase that I'm going to show you is going to be all the minuscule detailed stuff. The one-offs that are going to help ensure that you get through here. Something I should have done before I put down the flag and rallied is if you look at my missiles loaded counter on the lower left of my screen, you can shoot these keypads to load up Grand Overture. I should have done that before I rallied because then I would have had 67. We're going to end up creating so much ammo here and we have a way to get infinite heavy ammo in these phases, so it's ultimately not going to matter. Let's get to it. Step one, we're going to spawn the clone. I like to come back here to the right. There's going to be some dregs that spawn here. I love waiting for the dregs to pop out. Chucking a throwing hammer at one of them. Boom, there's my radiant and my restoration. Going to kill suppressor. I like to grab suppressor. I like to come straight to middle and I like to put the clone in. Whenever you're in middle and you drop the clone, both of the guys always come immediately. I also, even if I don't have anything that I, even if I don't need to drop it to break the radiation shields off these guys, I love just spamming the clone anyway whenever it's available because it pulls all of the aggro from everything. And so when you have these like shredder enemies, um, the resilient marauders and things of that nature, if they all just decide to start spraying you at the exact same time, they can really, really start to hurt. So making sure that you're spamming clones takes a little bit of the heat off you, if that makes sense. Um, just going to continuously smack these guys with the throwing hammer, spawn the clones whenever they become available. Keep an eye on that viral suppressor timer at the top of your screen. Once you have two sets of clones dead, that means all of the viral carriers are up in the arena. We can go ahead and we can bank suppressor. We want to intentionally keep operator alive and just focus on scanner. So we're going to kill scanner, pick it up, slide by all these things, see which one is the correct one. I hear the noise, I check my radar. Four! We're going to go ahead and bank Scanner now. The reason you want to keep the Operator up is because if you kill the Operator, 
early and his buff is sitting on the floor while you're doing the suppressor and scanner duties. Eventually, if you don't pick it up, it'll despawn. And when it despawns, a new viral carrier will respawn and along with him will come two more radiation clones. And then you'd have to go get suppressor again, strip the shields off the two brand new radiation clones. It's not the end of the world, but it's an extra layer of complication that I don't think people are going to want to deal with. So, yeah. If you ever forget which number you got, thank your operator. Come over, come back over here. Reobtain suppressor and double check. So I see right here it was four. Nothing wrong with being diligent here. Now I have double checked it's four. Grab this bad boy. When you're holding operator, very careful about fighting things, about shooting things. You want to borderline barrel stuff enemies because check this out. That throwing hammer, that counts as hitting the keypad. So if you chuck your throwing hammer at an enemy and it whizzes past their head and it hits an incorrect keypad, boom, your run is over. If you are trying to shoot an enemy and you miss your bullet and it whizzes past their head and hits an incorrect keypad, boom, your run is over. Be very slow in this room, killing enemies when you're holding an operator. Like, I'm not even kidding. Barrel stuff them and throw the hammer at the ground. That is how you kill these guys when you're holding an operator. Do not accidentally chuck past their head and hit the keypad and then your run's done. That would be a brutal way to go. As far as the rest of the enemies, once you're done with your duties up here, um, you can either kill all of them to try and get a bunch of heavy ammo, or if you don't want to deal with them, if you have enough heavy ammo hanging out up here, you can just go ahead and head down doing the mechanics. They will despawn by the time you come back up. Obviously, we're going to whichever side has the flashing lights. I'm gonna hop right back down, take a hard right, enter this cave. We've got some shotgun marauders. Do not disrespect these guys. They can kill you very fast. So we like to throw in here with the first one. Once we get into the first room, first thing we do is we pick up suppressor. The reason we pick up suppressor is because we want to suppress the guys that are gonna come in here but we do not want to kill them. If we use Suppressor to strip their shields, they can no longer apply radiation to us. But if we full kill them, then they are going to respawn with their radiation shields. So we just strip their shields, and then we leave them be. Radiation is one of the most dangerous things here. It is one of the most likely causes of your death. So be diligent. This blue room is very safe. Right here is extremely safe. The boss can't see you in any capacity. So if you're ever in a situation, seriously, like, take your time. Be patient. These guys can hit you, I guess. Back up a little bit. Now they can't see you. What are you doing here? How'd how you get in? Why do you guys have your radiation shields back? Maybe maybe if you take too long, they they pop in with a radiation shield. I, I don't know. It's taking a little longer than usual because I'm trying to explain the fight to you guys. So maybe, maybe that's causing new ones to respawn. I'm going to drop the uh, barricade to get the Lorely Sunspot down for my restoration, for my healing. Retake their shields. Once you have the shields off, we're going to go ahead and start doing our operator duties. In blue room, I always like to do this rotation. I hit this one. I hit this one. I run all the way around here to the left corner. Hit this one. And then I double back behind the safety pillar. I wait here until all of my healing cooldowns are available. My barricade plus my healing grenade. Once they're all available, then I hit this on the way, dunk this in, and then I beeline it to my scanner augment. I then grab my scanner. Oh, lucky me. You do not have to rebank scanner in the first one. If you can rebank it safely, and when I mean safely, I mean you have time to rebank it from the sector purge countdown debuff on the left side of your screen. In conjunction with you don't have the boss shooting at you, you're not low HP, you have a lot of healing cooldowns available, and you don't have a bunch of radiation sword enemies rushing you to count up your radiation stacks. If you have time, if you have wiggle room, rebank scanner before you dunk the core. If you're tight on time, there is nothing wrong with sprinting through here with scanner still equipped 
and losing it as you dunk the core. If that happens to you, all you have to do to reobtain scanner is very simple. First of all, step one, after you're done with the core, no matter what you do, you're gonna come out of here. We're gonna go through the basement route. I personally just run through the trip mines. I mean, I dodge them, but I don't bother sitting around and killing all of them. Sometimes I'll kill this mine that pops up, but they are really not that hard to dodge. In the situation in which you bank scanner and you lose it, when you arrive at this part, simply take a left to go to the upstairs area. He'll be hanging out right here. You can kill him and reacquire scanner, bank it in this room, and then get back to your business. Since I was able to bank scanner, I can just come back over here. We're going to get our suppressor. As I said, we're going to strip the shields off of these clones. Red room significantly more dangerous than blue room but I got a spot. This area right here, sniper boss cannot see you whatsoever. And if you crouch right here, these marauders can't see you either. So if you're ever in a situation where you need to, you know, you need some time, you look at my barricade. I want to wait for my Lorelei to come back before I continue with the mechanics. You can just hang out here. Nice and easy, nice and smooth. Gonna continue with our business, get our operator buff. And another thing I want to mention with Operator, this is what I like doing in Operator for this room, assuming that you deposit it and pull it from that machine, which is if, if you're following the same machine deposit patterns as I am, you will. I hit that keypad, that keypad. You can hit all the keypads from this arm right here, turn around. A neat little thing about when you finish Operator is as you hit the final keypad, the boss will be animation locked while they're spawning the four clones and they will not be able to shoot at you. So what I really like to do to make sure that I take as little damage as possible to main to be as safe as possible is while I'm dunking in the operator, because normally if I'm dunking in, the boss is a very easy angle on me. As I'm drifting to the station, I like to hit the final one. And so the boss is basically stun locked in that animation while I'm dunking operator. Now I'm weak, so I'm going to put down my barricade. Lorely would have cast on its own anyway. Lucky me. I've got this clone right here. First one I saw. This is room number two. So I don't care about keeping scanner anyway. Even if I could safely reduck it, it doesn't matter because this is room number two. I'm about to go into DPS phase. And um, and I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to reobtain scanner at the beginning of the phase anyway. There's no reason for me to redunk it here. Head right in with the bomb. Simple as that, right? Before I get to DPS phase, I want to make sure I have three stacks of armor charge. So, we're going to make sure we get those three stacks of armor charge right now. So, we're going to hop up here. I've got my Reaper active. Again, don't disrespect these guys because they hurt very, very much. So, I've got my Reaper active. I've got my Siphon mod going. Got two stacks of armor charge. Just need... One more. So boom. There she is. Three stacks of armor charge. The reason I want my three stacks of armor charge is because DPS phase, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit before we actually get into it because there's going to be a lot going on all at once. It'll be tough to explain. For DPS phase, the way we're surviving is with our Rally Barricade spam, because our Rally Barricade is going to absorb a lot of the shots from the boss and his clones. Plus, it's going to, of course, create that sunspot for us, which is going to give us restoration. Now, ideally, you want to make sure that you are actually casting your class ability instead of it being automatically consumed from you getting weak and creating the sunspot from Lurly Splendor. Because if you cast it, it gives you the Rally Barricade, plus it gives you the sunspot from Lorely. Whereas if it is automatically consumed because you hit critical health and Lorely consumes it to proc the sunspot, it gives you the sunspot for seven seconds of restoration, but it doesn't give you the rally barricade to soak up a bunch of extra damage. So you always wanna try to make sure that you are actually using the rally barricade as opposed to letting it be used by Lorely. So this is gonna happen fast. So I'm gonna talk about what's gonna happen first. Here's how our DPS rotation goes. Step one, we hold our alternate reload. So we have volley ready on the bottom left side of our screen with 20 missiles loaded. We're going to open with our grenade launcher to weaken the boss with our artifact mod, followed by a throwing hammer to proc Ember of Torches to give us Radiant. 
We're then going to pull out our Grand Overture, fire the entire 20 missile barrage on the boss, and then we're going to go back to our safety spot, which will be on top of the bunker. I'll then immediately cast my Rally Barricade, and we'll be hiding behind it, rotating our Grenade Launcher, which is auto-loading to weaken the boss, plus our Grand Overture to do damage to the boss with its individual shots. We'll rotate those over and over again, pop uh, our Rally Barricade again, because it will be available very quickly since our first cast is three stacks of armor charge with the utility kickstart, so we get a ton of energy back when we cast it initially. And then, by the time our second Rally Barricade runs out, we're going to be ready to pop our Throwing Hammers. We're going to chuck... The Throwing Hammers are going to keep us alive indefinitely, because when we pop them, we get a Sunspot underneath us. It's going to heal us. It's going to give us restoration. We're going to chuck our Throwing Hammers at the boss to do decent damage, but we're also going to chuck one or two of the hammers at the glowing clone in the middle of the arena to kill it so it drops the core. Once the boss then enters into immunity, we're going to jump off our safety spot, grab the core, go into the bunker, and dunk it to extend the DPS phase. After the bunker opens to get a, give us our second half DPS phase, we're going to get back in the safety spot, rally barricade down again, swap between grenade launcher and grand overature. Um... We're not going to have our healing, uh, our Rally Barricade ready immediately uh, after it disappears because we don't have Utility Kickstart with three stacks of armor charge when we initially put down our Rally Barricade in the second part of that DPS phase. That's what our Healing Grenade is for. So once our Rally Barricade goes away, once we get weak on HP, Healing Grenade, that'll give us enough time to get a another Rally Barricade, the healing and the restoration from that Healing Grenade. Since we have Tier 10 Resilience, it does come back relatively, relatively quickly. Second Rally Barricade for the DPS phase. Fire off a couple more shots, and that'll take us to the end of the DPS phase. So let's put that all into practice. So! We're going to fly on up. Grenade Launcher on the boss. Throwing Hammer for Radiant. It's okay if you miss him, by the way. And then we're going to get right in this little cubby right here. Get the Rally Barricade down. Really important that you're actually the one who casts the Rally Barricade. Our Grenade Launcher missed. Nothing wrong with that. Because, see, now our Restoration is gone. Our Sunspot is gone. But look at how much damage our Rally Barricade is soaking. On occasion, depending on the Rally Barricade placement, um, you might have to inch up a little bit because your shots might be going into the Rally Barricade. Now it's gone. Boom. Next Rally Barricade is already ready. That's thanks to that Utility Kickstart with three stacks of armor charge. So we're going to keep on frying. Then we're going to go ahead and paint the middle platform because that's where the boss is going. Rocket volley. Volley actually ended up hitting the clones. Then we rip our hammers. We're just chucking hammers, chucking hammers, chucking hammers, chucking hammers. Chucking hammers at the boss. And here he goes into his immunity phase. We're going to run over here, pick up the nuclear core, run into the bunker. Dunk. And we are chilling. Reload everything. As you can see, we have our Rally Barricade available. We have our Healing Grenade available. We're just going to get right back into that spot. Look at my radar. I see there's a clone right in front of me. I'm going to use that as an easy opportunity to chuck my throwing hammer at him to get Radiant. Make sure that I'm the one who casts the Rally Barricade. Because then we get the Sunspot plus the actual Barricade itself to soak a bunch of damage. Grenade Launcher. Grand Overture. Boom, 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 boom. Unfortunately... We are not going to have another Rally Barricade up and available by the time this one goes away. That is what our Healing Grenade is for. Our Healing Grenade is to bridge the gap between this Rally Barricade and the next. Boom. Restoration. Plenty of healing. Here's that next Rally Barricade. And that is the DPS phase jump. Super high up into the air. Because remember, if there is a lightning strike on that bunker door, we don't want to be close enough to the ground where it hits us and we get one shot. Jump very high up into the air. Land gently inside of here now we've set ourselves up very nicely for a very simple five phase as i said there's nothing wrong with that it's a marathon not a sprint i'm going to show you guys some more stuff though and i'm going to show you an alternative way to do the dps phase so here comes that's uh that's how you generally speaking want to play the encounter here's here's now it's time for all the extra tips that i have learned throughout my various attempts here. Um, not really a whole bunch of extra tips though for this particular phase. Those guys got smoked. Um, so we're gonna keep it going, spamming the clones, spam the clones. We're not killing Scanner yet, because remember, we don't want to kill him too early. And then his buff despawns, and then we have to wait for the Scanner guy to respawn. And then we gotta wait for 
we get two more clones along with it. We don't want that, so we're gonna leave him alive. If he dies to a sunspot, it's fine. Not really something you can control. But we, if we can help it, we don't want to kill him. I'm gonna put up an extra clone to soak aggro while I dunk the suppressor. And now we can kill Scanner. And we're gonna run on by. We've got three. I'm gonna clean up the room just a touch. Especially the shotgun, the resilient marauders. They are dangerous. I see uh, we accidentally killed Operator from a ignition. So that means it's time to get things going. And remember, while we're holding Operator, we are very careful about what we're shooting, where we're aiming our gun, where we're aiming our throwing hammer. We are careful. Because one... One throw goes a little sideways. <laughs> yeah. That's the run, baby. In terms of buff dunks, um, in terms of like which stations you're putting them in, you, you'll you notice that I always put suppressor in this one. I always put scanner in this one. I always put operator in this one. There might be a better choice in which station to put which buffs in because each station cor corresponds with a specific station downstairs in the red and the blue room. I honestly just put them in the ones that I'm used to. You're going to develop a rhythm. You're going to develop like this uh, habit of which buffs are in which stations. I wouldn't be too concerned about the most optimal pathing to which buffs downstairs and corresponding dunking them in these specific terminals up here. If you want to, you can. But... I wouldn't put too much. I don't think it's the end of the world, right? Red is on this side. So we're going to come on over here. And we're going to kill these guys. I hear... The second I hear ra radiation and I see that radiation buff start stacking, I'm out of there. I'm leaving. I am not letting that thing get up. The second that I see radiation X1, X2, X... Whatever. I'm gone. Because the radiation auras... Oh, boy. Thank God for Loralee, am I right? Um, the radiation auras are very desynced, right? Meaning that for, like... It feels like they tick you for, like, one or two extra stacks after you leave the auras. So don't play around and let it get to seven or eight or anything like that. Once you see it at two or three, time to go. Don't mess with it. If you end up leaving a couple that still have their auras, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. You don't have to get every single one down with the suppressor. It's just the more you get down, the safer it is, right? So, I want to show you guys what happens if you don't rebank scanner. So, neither of those guys are good. There's our guy. So, we're going to kill him, and let's say we're short on time. I'm like, ah, you know, my radiation's tight. I only have a couple seconds left on sector purge. I'm just getting in here. I don't want to worry about rebanking scanner. Not a problem at all. I'm going to show you exactly how you reacquire it. Before I show you uh, how to reacquire it, though, um, actually, we'll talk about this in the next room. This is the... going to give you something to beware of here. So, same pathing as before. We're just going to head through the basement. As I said, these trip wires are really not that difficult to head through. I like to kill that sometimes, but... You get a groove. Not bad at all. Throwing hammer on that guy. I always like to throw in hammer the first one to make a sunspot. AoE damages all the other ones and gives me restoration. And then take a left. There's our scanner. If you kill him ASAP, way easier. Um, if you take a little bit extra time to kill him, the servitor might immune him. And then you got to kill the servitor first. A little bit more of a pain, but not the end of the world. Step one, then. We are going to rebank our scanner. And then I'm going to get my bearings here. Before we continue with this room, I want to detail a few things. I have noticed when doing the phases that if I'm holding a buff, even if these bunker doors are closed, if I'm holding a buff and I kiss the door for whatever reason, like let's say I'm just pathing around and whatnot and I hit my jump and I go like this or something like that, I've noticed that in some circumstances, if I hit that door, even if it's closed, if I'm holding an augment, it will take away my augment. So just something to be aware of, okay? 
just something to be aware of. It's not the end of the world unless you are in the phase where you current where you have to hold scanner and you have to go to the four clones to identify which one is the one you have to kill for the nuke because you're on a time limit there and the doors to get back outside where you would theoretically reacquire scanner are closed. So make sure that if you're holding scanner, you stay clear of these doors because that's kind of an insta wipe. It's not automatically an instant wipe, but it forces you to take a guess at which of the remaining clones is the correct one, which is no fun. Another thing I want to outline is in my many, many hours of doing this, I have had, I've only had this happen once, but once is one time too many. When you're running around with Scanner and you're trying to scan all the clones, the boss is obviously going to be shooting at you, hurting you. The clones are obviously going to be shooting at you. There is a chance that you get one shot and your Lordly Splendor pops to create a sunspot as you're kissing one of the clones to see if it's the correct one or not. If your sunspot procs underneath it and it is the incorrect clone and the clone stands in the entirety of your sunspot and dies, then it immediately starts that wipe timer and you have very little time to go and find the correct one and actually kill it to get the right bomb, right? What I like to do is avoid what I like to do to avoid this is when I acquire scanner. So I always acquire scanner from this side, right? What I like to do is I like to grab it. I like to run past the first clone to scan it. And then I like to run up here and manually pop my barricade to one, give myself healing and give myself a healing checkpoint. And two, to guarantee that that sunspot will never accidentally go on an incorrect clone. Another thing that I want you guys to stay aware of, and this is if all else fails, if you're in a bad spot, your radiation stacks are high, the fourth clone scanned is the correct one. Time is running down, you're weak, your barricade's down, your healing grenade's down, you're in trouble. There is nothing wrong, similar to the previous encounter, with popping your super, using the hammers to smoke the boss, or the correct clone, and just chilling until, um, and just chilling until you get your super back for DPS phase. In fact, I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Nothing wrong with it. Even right now, look, I'm weak, I'm one shot, I'm not messing with it. Because when I pop my super, I immediately get that sunspot. I'm I'm not messing with it, dude. I'm not playing with it. I'll get my super back. There is plenty of very easy ways for me to get my super back. That take a minute or two. And I'll show you. It's also the way you get infinite heavy ammo, by the way. Fun fact. If I die, though, that's like an hour of wasted time. Be willing to pop your super. It's okay. It's all good. We're going to drift over to that final one as we shoot it because the boss has to uh, boss has to do his little clone spawn in animation right here. Get that Lorley barricade down so I get my healing and to make sure that um and to make sure that uh, the sunspot doesn't accidentally go on one of the incorrect clones. Hop in there. Dunk the core. And now I'm in a situation... Okay, it's DPS phase time. I don't have my super. Let's say I'm missing heavy ammo as well. Here's how you solve that problem. This is a two bird, one stone problem. Step one, let's make sure we get all our armor charge stacks because we need those before we go into DPS phase anyway. So we'll pop the barricade to get our Reaper procced. One orb from Reaper, one orb from the Siphon mods. And there's our other orb. Look at how much of our super we have back almost, by the way. We're halfway there. Living on a prayer. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, we're going to run over to the other side. Since we lost our scanner in that machine, scanner is going to be over here. And the reason, so we're going to kill those guys, kill the servitor, turn to our right. We're going to have those uh, shotgun marauders here. And what we can do here is really cool. This is how you get your super back, and this is how you get infinite heavy ammo. We're going to pick up the scanner augment. 
run through here, turn around 180 degrees, run through the elevator. That's going to take away Scanner, and then he'll respawn right here. So if you need heavy ammo or super energy, boom, turn around 180 degrees, through the elevator, takes away Scanner, hang tight, wait for him to spawn. Pick it up, up. Deactivate. And rinse and repeat. Until you have all the heavy and all the super energy you could ever want. Now here is DPS phase option number two. And if you want to guarantee solo flawless as reliably as possible, this is the option I recommend you go with. I did a lot of math and testing and like data like i i'm making myself sound so much i'm using words that make me sound so much smarter than I actually am i looked at the hp bar um after i did the first half of the dps phase and the second half of the dps phase and i found that typically the first half of my dps phase against the boss i typically took out anywhere from 15 to 18 percent of his hp in the second half of the DPS phase, I always took out anywhere from 5 to 9% of his HP. Meaning that two-thirds of my overall damage per phase comes from the first half, aka the damage I do before I acquire the nuke, dunk it in the bunker, leave the bunker, and get back in the spot and whatnot. The reason I bring this up is because, in, in my opinion, the most dangerous and frustrating way to lose one of these runs is when you are forced to go out onto the field to pick up the nuke, sometimes there's going to be a lightning strike on the nuke. Sometimes there's going to be a lightning strike directly on the path to the bunker. Sometimes there's going to be a lightning strike at the entrance of the bunker. And considering that you can't boost jump while you're holding the nuke, and you need to be able to boost jump to get high enough to not get one shot by the lightning, picking up the nuke and having bad RNG and having a lightning strike right at the mouth of the bunker to insta-kill you while you're trying to run in, Boom, your run is done. And so whilst I understand that people are always going to want to extend the DPS phase so that they don't have to do as many overall DPS phases, if you want to be as safe as humanly possible, the number one strategy is when the boss goes immune for the first time in the phase, the safest thing to do is instead of going for the nuke and trying to extend the phase, just hop back in the hole and call it there. Yes, it's going to mean you ultimately have to do significantly more phases, but in my opinion, everything leading up to the DPS phase is extremely controllable. Uh, you can be extremely patient with it, you can be very slow with it, and you can take your time with it. There are no situations in which you have to rush in any capacity with exception uh, to when he spawns the four clones and you have 40 seconds to find the correct one. That's it. And that's pretty generous considering all the cooldowns you have. The lightning positioning is very RNG. It's very difficult to see. The lightning indicator is yellow. The skybox is yellow. When you're inside a lightning indicator, your screen is yellow. The floor is yellow. Everything's yellow. And it's really hard to see. And I can't tell you how many runs I've wiped going out to get the core, trying to extend the phase. And I just get destroyed by a lightning strike that's at the mouth of the bunker. So, what I would recommend you do... It's going to take you more phases, and it's going to require a lot of discipline on your part. But it's astronomically safer, because it takes lightning RNG out of the equation when it comes to solo flawless in this dungeon. So what I would urge you to do, same thing. We get up here. We have our three stacks of armor charge. We get our rally barricade down. We've got our sunspot. It's healing us. Boom, 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 boom with a grand overture. We're mixing in our grenade launcher. Reload that. Another grenade launcher shot to weaken the boss. Boom. Another barricade because it's ready to go. Boom, 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 boom. I, I always like to aim my Grand Overture up a lot, by the way, to try and hope that the missiles ignore the clones in front of me and go straight to the boss. Boom, 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 boom. I like to try and get that in right there to weaken the boss before we start ripping hammers at him. And then we just start chucking hammers at him. Hammers, 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 hammers. I'm ignoring the glowing clone to my right. I do not care about him. And then as far as I'm concerned, right there, this DPS phase is done. Gonna hurt a little bit when you land. Try to save a little bit of your jump to bolster your fall right there so you don't take too much fall damage. 
Not nearly as much DPS. Not nearly as much DPS. But there is no universe where the lightning can kill you if that is how you treat every single DPS phase. I totally understand that it's frustrating. I totally understand that the idea of going seven, eight, nine DPS phases is not an enjoyable prospect. But trust me when I say that getting nuked by a lightning strike as you enter that bunker is a significantly less enjoyable prospect. And it is something that will make you very, very, very upset. And it'll feel very demoralized and it does not feel good at all. Take the extra 30 minutes, 40 minutes, maybe even an hour. Take the extra time. I, this is just my recommendation. You can ultimately do whatever you want. I recommend you take the extra time to be slow, to be to go ahead and sacrifice that second half of the DPS phase to guarantee your safety. This is a solo flawless, not a solo high DPS flawless. And just like that, you have officially solo flawless. Vesper's host on a Titan. It's gonna take a definitely a couple of attempts, gonna take a little bit of practice, gonna take a lot of discipline, gonna take a lot of resilience. But you will, without a doubt, come out on top in the end. And for the record, the fact that you're even watching this video and even considering attempting this is impressive enough and something that you should most definitely be proud of. Even if it takes you a week, even if it takes you a month, even if it takes you six months to eventually get this done. This is a very impressive feat, and you should be proud of yourself. If you're looking for the guides for Titan or Warlock, stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button down below so you see all my videos. We'll have those out as soon as humanly possible. Sorry that I was so delayed on getting this one out. One, this is the hardest solo flawless dungeon in Destiny history, in my personal opinion. And two, I had to go on a work trip to uh, check out a new game. I was out in California for um, about half a week three days after the dungeon released. So it was a little bit behind on getting my practice in and getting all my testing in for all the various loadouts. So I hope this helped. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.